Uh, Freya, can you stop licking the gear? Stop. What is your... Why are you licking it? So, here's the challenge. Zero latency. Wireless video transmission rig. Plus, a large director's monitor. All self-powered. Like, no plugging into walls. No large V-mount batteries. Just super portable. Must be super easy to set up. Super easy to use. And do all of this as cheaply as possible. And it's that last bit that's super tricky because I want as little latency as possible. Zero latency. See, I want this whole setup to serve multiple purposes, even wireless focus pull if I want to. That zero latency immediately excludes some of the more popular budget options from folks like Hollyland. This isn't something I'm gonna be able to solve with like 500 bucks. But I also didn't want to spend three grand or more, which is kind of the cost you were facing in the past if you wanted a zero latency wireless setup and a director's monitor. The company that was able to get me what I needed might not be the first company that comes to mind when you think about doing things on a budget. It's Teradek, and the product is the Spark 4K. Now at about $1,500, this isn't something I'd call cheap, but compared to other zero latency wireless video transmission products on the market, the Spark 4K is substantially cheaper. While I was able to get my hands on the Spark 4K to check out for myself, it wasn't for this video, and none of the folks at Teradek are seeing this video ahead of time. You know, blah, blah, this isn't a sponsored video, blah, blah, blah. So let's go over all the bits you're gonna need for this setup. First, let's start with the camera. Now, normally I'd be using my FX3, but it's currently shooting me right now. So we're gonna bring on a Sony A7C. It's here in just a little small rig getup. We're gonna mount the Spark transmitter on just a little generic field monitor mount. It has a locating pin on there too. So the transmitter won't twist on you when you get it installed. And we'll just mount that right to the cold shoe mount on the top handle here. And then we obviously need to run an HDMI cable on the transmitter into the camera. And that's it for the camera. So now we're gonna put together what I'm calling my poor man's director's monitor. It starts with a light stand. This is a little King TV maximum work. These run you about $40. Absolutely love these light stands. For a stand that's under, what, a hair under eight feet tall, by far my favorite. It's a super solid stand. So we'll set him up real quick. Next bit is this small rig tablet mount. Again, it's meant for a tablet, but it opens wide enough so I can slip the monitor into this. And we've got a little light stand spud at the end of it here. Spud. Now the monitor I'm using is from G-Story. I'll have the model numbered in the video screen somewhere. It's a really nice 1080p panel. It supports HDR, which the Spark 4K can transmit HDR as well. It's incredibly lightweight. It's super, super thin. Most importantly, you can power it over USB-C. So we'll mount him into the tablet well, holder. Next, I have just this generic smartphone holder. At the top of the tablet mount, there are two cold shoe mounts, plus some quarter 20 mounts as well. But it's the cold shoe mounts we're gonna use here. So we're gonna slide that and into there. We're gonna put this 22.5 watt hour, uh, power delivery capable USB battery bank. That's in. And now we'll take the Spark 4K receiver. And again, I'm just using a little generic monitor mount. And we'll slide that into the other cold shoe mount of the tablet holder. Everything's nice and solid, nothing's coming out. So now we'll plug in the cables that came with the monitor, which was a mini HDMI to full size 
HDMI cable, and then USB cable. Now, the Spark receiver doesn't have a built-in battery like the transmitter does, but you can power it over USB-C. So we'll plug that here, plug the other end into the power bank. Now, obviously, I need to work on my cable management here. It doesn't look very good. I haven't figured out exactly what to do with that quite yet. If you've got any suggestions, let me know down in the comments. And everything is set up here. So we're gonna turn everything on. We'll see how quickly we're up and running. So we'll turn on the camera. Camera's up and running. Turn on both of the spark units. Monitor's already on for me. Spark searching for a frequency. And we've got video. And I can't emphasize enough how important ease of use is for me. When I'm on a shoot, I don't have time to be futzing around with stuff, going through menu settings and things like that. I want to turn everything on and be running right away. And honestly, that's what the system gives me. So what I'm going to do here is a very simple but very effective latency test. A lot more effective than someone just waving their hand in front of a screen. You're going to see a monitor on the left and the right and a timer on my phone. Now, this diagram makes explaining this a little bit easier to understand. We start with the A7C. I'm taking the HDMI out of the camera and running that into a splitter. Out of the splitter, I'm running one HDMI straight to the field monitor that will be on the left. Next, I run the other HDMI output to the Spark 4K transmitter. That's sending the video signal wirelessly to the Spark receiver, which is connected to the monitor on the right. So with everything in the same shot, I'll start the stopwatch on the phone. And if there's no latency on the Spark, then we should see the exact same time on both of the monitors when I pause this later in post. Go ahead and start the stopwatch. I'll zoom into both screens. Then I'll pause it. And there you go. The clocks are identical meaning the Spark 4K has no latency coming out of it. Now keep in mind, what you don't wanna do when you're testing latency is the recording directly off of your camera onto the SD card with your HDMI output because HDMI itself has an inherent latency built in. What we're trying to test here is just the straight up latency of the Spark 4K, which as we've shown here, it has no latency. Let's talk for a sec about the quality of the video feed that you're getting out of this thing. It can transmit in 1080p up to 60 frames per second, like most wireless systems. But as the name suggests, it can also transmit up to 4K 30 frames per second. Remember, little to no latency, it doesn't matter if you're shooting in 1080p or 4K. And let's talk about that 4K signal for a sec. You might wanna hold on to your butts here. This thing transmit up to 4K, 30 frames per second, 10-bit, 422. Again, little to no latency. So I wanted to do an image quality comparison of the wireless feed out of the Spark. So on the left is the straight to SD card internal recording of my FX3. On the right is the wireless signal of the Spark 4K recorded with my Atomos Ninja. Both 4K, 10-bit. The image quality out of the Spark looks fantastic to me. Zooming in to 150%, I'm still finding it challenging to see much of a difference. It's not until I zoom into 200% that I start seeing that the Spark's image is not quite as clean as the internal recording of the FX3. Keep in mind, that image on the right is a wireless video signal. Bunch of freaking wizards over at Teradek, man. I don't know the nitty gritty on how exactly they were able to get this done other than it has something to do with a proprietary joint source coding algorithm that's able to send large chunks of data over the five gigahertz wireless spectrum. And this isn't encoded H264 or H265. It's a proprietary transport mechanism specific to Teradek. But most importantly with the setup, I've saved thousands of dollars in equipment costs. What are the downsides to this setup? Well, we'll start with the Spark 4K. It's a 
bit on the plasticky side. It, I mean, it's not bad. There's some metal bits here and there. I mean, it feels really solid, but you know, it's not the all metal build quality of something like Teradex Ranger series. I'd be really surprised if you saw the Spark 4K in like rental houses, for example. The range is limited to 500 feet line of sight. There's a battery indicator on the transmitter, but it doesn't, as far as I can tell, doesn't really do a very good job of telling you actually how much battery life uh, is left on there. I would have much preferred if it was an actual percentage indicator. Now the monitor I'm using is just a cheap, fairly inexpensive USB-C powered monitor. And you're not getting the features that a dedicated director's monitor would give you things like, you know, being able to zoom in or focus peaking, stuff like that. And of course, you're not paying the price of a dedicated director's monitor either. Plus, it's only 1080p, so you're not really seeing the, the kind of quality that the Spark 4K can transmit on. But it's, it's not bad. Honestly, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. I was able to achieve everything I wanted to do with this setup and in the process save myself a ton of money compared to dedicated higher priced gear. I just love how portable and compact everything is. Everything packs away nicely into this backpack, including my poor man's director's monitor, and I can shoot anywhere regardless if there's power at the location or not. If I need to be shooting for extended periods of time, like past two hours, I simply pack a larger USB battery bank. Now, if you don't need zero latency wireless, you can save a few bucks and go with something like the Shimble 600S, a good budget price wireless kit. The 600S can also be powered by USB-C, but neither of the units have a built-in battery and like most wireless kits in that price range, it can't transmit in 4K. Lastly, I want to say something about Teradek in general. Customer service makes a that's, a, that's a big deal for me. You know, a company might make the most amazing product in the world, but if it's like pulling teeth to get a hold of someone, if you have a problem, I don't really want any part of it. Even before I had the idea for shooting this video, I had reached out to the folks at Teradek about some stuff and the crew over there bent over backwards to help me out. I mean, I've got a baby YouTube channel. I don't have a very large audience. But in dealing with the Teradek folks, they made me feel like I was their most important customer. You know, these days folks are so quick to bash companies online when they've had a bad experience with them. And not enough people actually speak up when they've had a good experience. So I just wanted to take this brief moment to thank the folks at Teradek and all the rest of the guys at Creative Solutions for being so cool. I hope you got something out of this video. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you've got any questions about any of the gear here, let me know in the comments. Have a good one.